Thanks for checking out this show review video. This is for the show on Netflix and our Netflix original, The Haunting of Hill House. So some of you people out there may know uh, The Haunting of Hill House is actually based on a book by Shirley Jackson. It's an old book. I oh, was from like the 60s or 70s, maybe even older than that, to be honest. It's it's a book that's been around for a while. There have been many iterations of the story done as far as like film, uh, shows, movies, all that. And uh, it's a great base story. I haven't actually read the book, but I've seen a lot of the interpretations of the story done through movies and shows. And obviously The Haunting of Hill House is the most recent one. So um, I wanted to go ahead and, and just kind of talk about this right now, get all my feelings out on it, and let you know that if you haven't watched this one, get it. Especially if you have Netflix. Like I said, it's a Netflix original, so you have to have Netflix in order to see it. If you have Netflix, you're a horror fan, and you haven't seen it, this is a must in my opinion. So I'll, I'll start this off by saying I'm not a big fan of horror, or the horror subgenre of haunted houses. Obviously this falls into haunted houses with a, with a title like The Haunting of Hill House. That's how it falls into that category. I don't know what it is about that subgenre that doesn't really appeal to me that much. Um, I guess I just don't really find, like, ghosts all that scary. But every now and then, there's a movie or a show or a book or whatever that really does a good job with it and is affecting for me. And The Haunting of Hill House is definitely one of those. One of the big things for me about the way this was executed, well, first of all, the directing is phenomenal. The cinematography is phenomenal. It just looks good. The camera work looks good. How everything was directed looks good. The, f the actual film of how it was done the resolution, everything. It looks so good. It looks so good. Now, the cast, for the most part, does a, a, a really good job with the acting. There are times here and there where each of them kind of fall apart a little bit with what they're doing. Uh, but at the same time, like these are demanding roles. They really are. If you watch through this whole series and keep that in mind, thinking, you know, could I do this acting or is this easy acting or not easy acting? Those are demanding roles. They all really are demanding roles. Um, but for the most part, I think people do a good job. Every now and then, little little uh, crack in the facade of their acting, but for the most part, solid. The story in this is awesome. It is front and center. It is what drives it. And the great thing is it's not, I mean, it, it's horror, but it's not horror all the time. It's a lot of drama. It's done on the with the backdrop of a family's relationship with each other and how this haunted house that they lived in basically affected their lives long term. Because there was something that, well, there were a lot of things, but there was one major thing that happened when they were living in this house. And then it kind of goes forward and it shows them as they're all grown-ups and they're living their lives and how their lives are, everyone's life is messed up in one way or another. And that all goes back to something that happened at the house that affected them. Uh, there's one thing that affected all of them, but then there are individual things haunting wise that affected each person individually. And it's, it's really cool to see because they keep doing this kind of back and forth where it's like, it's present day and it's showing how they're they're getting along with each other and how they're getting along in their own lives and how they're functioning or not functioning, the issues that they have, how they deal with those issues, and then it'll have the flashbacks to show you their story and you know what happened to them, what damaged them basically, what made them the way they are in present day, and just kind of show you their memories as well to show you like the little glimpses of the actual hauntings that were going on in the house. And the way they put those together worked extremely well. There are times where, you know, the flashback thing doesn't really work too well because it gets too confusing or it just seems like kind of stupid because you keep being like present, past, present, past, present, past. But it it worked really well. It was interwoven extremely well. And Mike Flanagan, the guy who wrote and directed it, um, awesome. Uh, he's the guy who did, I think he, he showed up on the horror scene with the show or the movie Oculus which I remember watching and it looked amazing and it was really well directed, but I just didn't really like the story that much. But then he did Gerald's Game, the movie based off a Stephen King short story that was a Netflix original that obviously is still on Netflix because I believe all their originals on there. That one I really recommend too. He did a really good job with that. It's very, very slow. I know a lot of people who've started it and then they bail on it within the first like 10 to 20 minutes because they're like, what is going on? It's so slow. There's nothing going on. But you have to stick with it. There is a real serious payoff at the end. Trust me. 
uh, and the writing is awesome. And just like that, the writing for The Haunting Hill House is outstanding. It is so good. The mixture of horror and drama is amazing, and the family story is very affecting. It's very emotional. You can feel it. It's it's realistic, too. None of it comes off as being, like, hokey or dumb or, oh, that wouldn't happen. That doesn't make sense. So it's very real life, and then you add in the supernatural haunting aspect to it. And it's it, it could have been done so that they don't mesh properly, but they totally mesh properly, and it's amazing. One of the other things is they have a lot of moments of utilizing silence very well, which I feel like is an underappreciated thing to do. A lot of films and shows, they feel like they have to have music all the time to kind of signal to the viewer how they should be feeling or, or what's coming up. But there's a lot of power in having moments of just silence where people can just take in what's going on without having any emotional or, um, or auditory cues. And sometimes that can just make things a lot better. And that is something that's used to great effect in The Haunting of Hill House. So I just think overall it's, I wouldn't say it's 100% a masterpiece, but it's not all that far off in my opinion. It's, it's just so good. And the other thing is the scares. And I think this is one of the big things for me with, with you know, I was talking about the subgenre of haunted house movies not being all that big for me. I think part of the problem is it's like consistent jump scares a lot of the time. And with this film or with this show, they spread the jump scares out a lot, but they keep tension up. So it, it, you just kind of are going through it and you're kind of expecting that you're going to get one, but then you don't really know when it's coming because of how scarce they are i mean you definitely get them it's, and so when you get them they're more impactful and they're good and they're really well done none of them are hokey none of them are stupid but they do a good job of keeping that tension and then just nailing you with one here and there and it works really well it is i cannot recommend this show enough i think this is one of the best horror shows i've seen in quite a while um I mean, at the moment, I'm trying to rack my brain quickly and, and think of any horror show that I've watched recently and, and thought is better than this. And I can't really think of one at the moment. It's really, really amazingly good. Uh, so, yeah, I 100% uh, endorse this. I want to see what else Mike Flanagan's going to be doing because that guy is killing it. He's doing such an amazing job. And... Um, and, oh, yeah, they got uh, renewed. They're going to be doing a season two, which I don't really know what a, what a second season of the show would be like. They can tie it into the first season, um, but that would be really challenging in my opinion. So I'm assuming what they're going to do is have it be the same similar type of story, but be not connected to the first one, have all new cast and everything. So, But I don't know. We'll see. But I will tell you, as long as Mike Flanagan is involved with it, I am in I am so in. So people, you need to go out and totally check this out. I love it, love it, love it. So out of a five-star rating, what would I give it with half stars in play? It's not perfect. It is not perfect, but it is very good, and it's not too far off. For a horror show, I give it a 4.5. I got to go 4.5. It is almost perfection, in my opinion. Very well written, very emotional, drama, comedy, or not comedy, drama, and horror excellently interwoven but yeah that's it so thank you so much uh put some comments down there did you watch the haunting of hill house if so tell me your thoughts on it did you like it did you not like it are you excited for season two the other thing is give me some more recommendations for horror shows i should be checking out i actually at the moment am working on finishing up castle rock through hulu so i will do a review of that once i am done with it but give me some other recommendations down there uh, hit that subscribe. Please hit that subscribe. If you've seen anything that you even remotely enjoy on my channel, a subscribe takes you literally a second and can mean a lot to me in the long run. Hit the notification bell so you know anytime I'm putting up a video. That helps too, especially if you watch immediately when the videos go up or not long after they go up. Uh, it can help me get extra traffic. And then hit those likes if you want to. If not, that's not a big deal. But thank you for checking this out. Really appreciate it. And until next time, keep it brutal.